What's going on guys? Today is the week three challenge video. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great Monday. I know I'm having a great Monday. Out on that grind, keeping that grind going. We are on week three. The challenge this week is going to be less is more, which is kind of like in my mind, a minimalistic type shot. We are getting the polar vortex. So I'll show you guys here in a second, obviously when we get outside. So I really don't wanna to get too far in driving, but my idea doesn't involve driving, which is a good thing because of the weather. But I think the snow is gonna kinda of help because we are supposed to get another 12 to 16 inches of snow today alone. Um, it's definitely coming down pretty hot and heavy right now. So hopefully we can uh, get some decent shots even with the snow. But my idea is to go outside, let these two dogs who are already feisty as hell right now, hey, stop who are already feisty, get out there and play in and get some shots. I think I'm gonna use the 70 to 200 f2.8 image stabilized Canon lens. That way it zooms in a little bit, takes a lot of the background away, then I'll be able to use the snow to kind of help isolate the subject and kind of make a light, less is more photo. Uh, obviously with not that much to shoot in terms of going and traveling, and things like that. I think I'm gonna make this video more about the edit than about the taking of the photo. I'll get some B-roll of them outside playing and everything, and get some shots. But I think this will be more about the edit and showing you guys how I edit the photo and how I make it the less is more. And that way you guys can kind of see the process that I got going. But without further ado, let's go into the intro and let's head outside and get with these dogs. here these fucking dogs are being hooligans right now it is snowing like crazy um, but I'm thinking as part of the shots I was taking which I've already gotten all the shots already these dogs are playing I got some shots of them playing but a less is more shot I'm thinking we're gonna do is just like isolate the snow isolate one of the dogs probably probably Ohana because I think she, Jesus look at these two dogs go crazy I can't help myself gotta get help cuz I can't do with my But uh, they just loving outside right now. But anyway, guys, I'm getting kind of cold because I'm only out here in some sweatpants and a hoodie. So let's get inside. Let's get back to the computer. Let's start. Uh... Jesus. Hey, you guys, slow down. Let's go back inside. Let's get to the computer. And uh, let's get some of these photos in. And let's see which one we're going to pick. And I'm going to show you guys how I edit it. Let's go. Alrighty, guys, we are back in the studio. I have to give full disclosure. I recorded this several days ago. Um, but I had an old mic and an old setup and the quality was just complete and total garbage. So I wanted to upgrade, as you can see in the background, I've added a ton more acoustic panels. I've got acoustic panels in front of me, to the side of me, all around me I've got acoustic panels. I wanted to re-record this with a little bit better audio, with a little bit better video. I've upgraded the software I've used to record. So hopefully I've moved some things around to reduce interference the best I could. So hopefully I can improve the quality because uh, to be completely fair, the quality before was just not acceptable for what I wanted to put into a video. So I'm going to try to recreate the photo that I've already edited and show you guys how I edited the photo in the past and then show you the official edit that I submitted to Rookser. Uh, it's going to look almost identical to this. It may not be perfect uh, just because I'm redoing it, but I wanted to make sure I got the best quality to you guys. So I think you guys will understand. So let's go ahead and get into Lightroom and then I will show you guys exactly how I did it. 
Okay, so this is the photo that I selected for the Less Is More Challenge. I think this fits the challenge fantastically with the snow really isolating Ohana by herself, just in the middle of a snowstorm, kind of unsure of herself. So I think it kind of represents the challenge the best. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and make a few tweaks to the photo just with your basic sliders. I'm sure most of you guys understand how these sliders work within Lightroom. And then we'll get into a couple more complicated-esque type of edits. Now, to be completely fair, I'm no expert at Photoshop. I'm no expert at Lightroom. And all of these adjustments are all going to be to your liking. My adjustments may not be exactly what your adjustments are, but the idea is there. And you can understand how I edit my photos. And that's kind of why I'm showing you. So the first things that I always do is I always adjust my highlight shadows, whites, and blacks first. Now, the reason I do that is that... I don't want to adjust my exposure, contrast, clarity, because all those things are going to ultimately affect the exposure. But I want to try to use highlight shadows, whites, and blacks to bring the most amount of detail and color that I can, as well as most contrast through those sliders. The other thing that I want to do right off the rip is I'm going to go ahead and go to lens correction and then check both the remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. What that does is that takes away the natural vignette, which naturally increases your exposure and the chromatic aberration will ultimately decrease the amount of haloing and other miscellaneous things that you don't want in the photo. So what I'm going to do here is I always try to bump my highlights up. I don't do this. I don't think I'm going to need to do this very much. Bump my shadows way up because the image is, that'll help me bring out a lot more detail uh, in the photo. My whites need to come up so the picture's a little bit more white. And I will bring my blacks down just ever so slightly to kind of add contrast to the photo bump a little my clarity up just ever so slightly i think that'll be good not going to do anything with dehaze up my vibrance to add a little more color but in all retrospect i will bring this down just to kind of balance the photo out again this is just our starting point uh, we're going to take this into photoshop do a whole bunch more editing and then we'll bring it back and really make the whites pop in the end of the photo I'm going to bring up my sharpening ever so slightly. We're not going to do anything with that. We can do that towards the end. And then nothing else really needs to be done at this point. Um, I might actually bring my exposure up ever so slightly just now. And I think this is a very good point to where we can really take this photo into Photoshop. So to go ahead and do that, you can just right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Or if you want a shortcut, it is Control E or Command E, I believe, on Mac. So the first things I want to do here on the photo is... Ultimately, all these footprints that are in the snow, I want to go ahead and remove that. So the easiest way I've found to do that is with the spot healing brush. Make my brush a little bit bigger and just paint in where I want it to be. And as you could tell, the content aware, because content aware is checked up top here, my brush is normal. It basically takes the surrounding area and just fills in that area with what Photoshop. Now it's not a perfect science, but I'm gonna go ahead and edit out the rest of this photo, but to save time, I'll fast forward. And then when I come back, it'll all be uh, smoothed out. Okay, I think that's looked pretty good. Uh, maybe a couple more spots here, but I think overall, most of the footprints have been removed. The snow is much more smoother now. So after I've edited that, we can kind of zoom in on the dog, making sure there's no spots or anything we need to remove on her, which I, I always try to remove this spot right here because I think that just doesn't look too, too, too great on her. So we will move that spot. There's a spot right here that we'll remove. Control zero goes to full screen, so that kind of gives you a full perspective of the image. I think that's pretty good. So the next things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer so everything else is non-destructive. You could have duplicated the layer before and done it that way so you didn't destroy the original image, but I knew I didn't like that in the image, so we can do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and add a brightness and contrast layer. And by clicking this clicking ma or clipping mask button here, it only affects the layer below it. So it won't affect both layers, but just the layer one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the brightness all the way up and the contrast and then invert the mask so that oops wrong button invert the mask and what that does is it allows me to draw in where i want this brightness and contrast rather than having it affect the entire image so i go to my brush make sure my brush is set to white or my color is set to white and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in here in ohana's eyes 
and just fill in the eyes and that should help brighten up the eyes as well. And this is usually a technique that most people do with uh, portraits. Okay, so we'll go ahead and brighten in these eyes, making sure your flow and opacity are way up. Don't be bashful with this. You can even brighten this up a little bit more. And then if you mess up, just invert your color to black. And you can go right in and remove the areas that you brightened that you didn't necessarily want brightened. And then you can just make sure the eyes are bright and nothing else. Then what I like to do is come up to my opacity and my flow, go really low, like under 20 on each. And then what you can do is just do around the eyes a little bit. Just so the outer part of the eye isn't such a hard transition between the eye and the rest of the body. So as you can tell before, after, so that just brings a little bit more color out in her eyes. You can probably lower the contrast just a little bit. And again, this is before and this is after. I think it just gives a great addition to the dog. It makes it really look a lot better. Then what I do after that is I'm going to go ahead and merge all these layers and create a copy. And to do that, that's Control Shift or Control Alt Shift E or Command Option Shift E. What they'll do is they'll duplicate everything or merge everything together below it and then create a duplicate layer of that. Then what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and enable this for smart filters. That makes it non-destructive, and if I want to change anything at a later time, I can with any of the filters that I'm going to go ahead and put on. Put my nor uh, my layer type to overlay, and then I'm going to put a high-pass filter. What that's going to do is just sharpen up the image. We'll set it at, we'll just default it at 11. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, I don't want the whole image to be sharp. Again, I want the snow to be nice and soft and white, so I'm going to put that as a layer mask and invert the layer mask. Set my brush to white. And then I'm just going to paint in Ohana. And what that's going to do is just put the high pass filter on Ohana. Oh, don't forget to open, uh, change your opacity and flow back up to 100%. And all that's going to do is just sharpen Ohana and nothing else. And again, you don't have to be too precise. If you mess up, all you got to do is flip your mask color from white to black. And then... Paint out the area you didn't want to be sharpened. And all that does is just removes that from the, the mask. Again, and as you can tell in the lower right corner here on the mask, it shows pretty much an outline of Ohana, which I think pretty much shows that you nailed it. All right, now that I've gotten the high pass filter on there, I think we can go in there and play with the numbers a little bit. I think that might be a little too much, 11. So we can go back down to about 8. And I think that's a much better volume. And that's, again, the reason why you put the smart filter on. So you, once you do the high patch, if you want to go back and make changes to it, you certainly can. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to do to the image is I want to go ahead and throw some snow over top of the image to add a little bit of some additional effects to the... Uh, and to do that, I, I downloaded an add-on to... Photoshop called free stock search. You can search it from the Adobe website and just add it on. There's a lot of videos on how to do that. I will go ahead and grab this snow here. Make it much bigger. And then I'm going to set our layer type. So I think soft light is going to be our best option. Definitely going to have to lower the opacity so it's not so definitely overwhelming. Another thing I want to do is I'm going to put a hue saturation layer onto this and get rid of the blue. So I'm going to set this as a clipping mask again so it only affects the pexels layer or the snow layer. Go to my default or sorry, master and go to my blues and we're going to bring the saturation way down. Again, because I don't want any sort of blue in the image. Then we can kind of come back to our layer and play with our opacity a little bit. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask. And all I'm going to do is set my brush to black. And the reason I want to do that is I'm going to paint away the snow that we just put on top of the image. I'm going to paint that off of the dog so that there's no extra snow over top of Ohana. Just so it's not taking away from the actual subject of the image. But it adds a little bit to the other parts of the image even lower the opacity ever so slightly even more. 
And again, it's hard to see probably, but if I zoom in here, you can see the added snow that we added to the image. Okay, so I think that's pretty good for what we need to do here in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this image and send it back to Lightroom. To do that, you can just go to File Save or Control S or Command S to save it. And then it'll send it back to Photoshop. As you can tell, the photo here is a .tif, which is indication that it's been edited. It also shows dash edit. And if you go back to the original image, it's a dash CR2. So just to kind of show you what it was before and what it is now. What a great difference. The snow looks so much better. Her eyes look better. And the added snow, I think, just adds to the photo. Now we're going to go ahead and bump up the highlights and our exposure ever so slightly just to make the image pop a little bit with the snow being a little bit whiter. Bring our blacks down to add a little bit of contrast. Go into our HSL slider and we're going to go ahead and bump the oranges and the yellows to make Ohana a little bit more vibrant. Bring down our blues because I don't want much blue in here. And I'm going to add, change the color to have a little bit more blue. And all that's going to do is give Ohana a little bit more blue of a color. And then go to our HSL and back down the blues even more just so that the snow isn't too blue. So I think this is a pretty good indication of how I edited the photo in Photoshop and Lightroom as a combination. I hope you guys have enjoyed this short tutorial here. And let's go ahead and go back to the end of the video here. Alrighty guys, so we have finished the edit as I shown you guys on the computer. I took a little bit of a break, just came back and looked at the photo. I really like how the photo turned out. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it like that. Uh, so that's gonna be my submission. So one last time, let me go ahead and show you guys the photo here. I really like the minimalistic look of the photo. Lots of just white in the photo and then Ohana. We brought out some of the details in Ohana to kind of show the sharpness and how great she looks. We brought up the color in her eyes and we also added a little bit more snow to kind of just add to the photo. I don't think that's anything wrong because there was a ton of snow going on, but sometimes the lens isn't just great at picking that up. Let me know what you guys think of the photo in the comment. But here guys, here is Rooksor's photo. Take a look at it. Okay, don't forget to hit the poll in the upper corner here and make sure you let us know whose photo do you think is best. Do you like my photo or do you like Rooksor's photo? Also, this Sunday, again, this is the week three challenge. This Sunday, we are gonna have a live stream to discuss these photos, to critique these photos, to go over what we think we could have done better, what we didn't like, did the photo really meet what we thought in our minds, to go ahead and explain it. Please don't forget to vote because these challenges don't really work unless you guys help us out and you know vote. Also, if you guys got a submission for a less is more photo, doesn't matter what kind of photo it is. Go over to the Instagram, post it on Instagram, tag us at throw photo, put the hashtags throw photo or throw photo challenge so we can review your images on the live stream on Sunday as well. Hopefully this will be the last time I have to use the crappy mic and webcam setup. Hopefully moving forward, I'll have a much better setup. Again, we're still working out the details and quirks and kind of feeling things as they go. Again, don't forget to attend the live stream on Sunday. Don't forget to click the link in the description to Rooksor's video so you could see how he made his video and how, and how he created his image as well. And as always, guys, we appreciate your love and support on the videos and this challenge as well. We'll see you guys on Sunday and for the next challenge on Monday, which the next challenge is going to be framing your shot. So it's something along the lines of maybe framing your shot within the frame. We call that a frame within a frame, or really just trying to put their subject into a sort of frame, like a door frame or something like that. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But anyway, guys, that's all I have for you rambling here today. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you guys on Sunday. Bye. Make me feel alive, but confused. Should I spend more time on you? Cause I know that you hurt.